and uh, welcome to a special edition of the LosAmigos.com preview show. I'm your host, Jose Contreras. We're going to be talking all 14 trials of the Los Alto Mayo Futurity. I've kind of mapped out a special guest handicapper for each one of the trials, so we'll, it'll be a fun show. We'll keep it fast moving here. Pleased to start the show here with Ed Burgard, longtime voice of Los Alamitos, and still uh, plenty busy doing our morning line. Ed, how you doing on this uh, Friday afternoon? I'm feeling pretty good right now. I had to spend a little more time last night with the trials because I had to do the morning line for 14 of them. It's been a while yeah. since we had 14 trials. I think we had 13 for the Golden State Million, and this is one of the best groups I've seen in a long time. You know, with Train Station coming off that spectacular victory in the Golden State Million, it's going to obviously be an odds-on favorite, I believe, in trial number six. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least trial number six or eight, whichever one it is. But uh, yeah. a lot of quality horses, political royalties, undefeated, going for seven wins in a row. So really looking forward to a good night of trials. Yeah, it should be. Uh, we are in a time zone change already, so it should be should, – it gets dark earlier, right? We've seen it, Ed, was sometimes the daylight could affect – could help the early uh, early runners early in the cart. But I feel like it's going to be – should be already dark by the time the, the races begin on Sunday night. Yeah, I think the race will either start at 5 or 5.15, somewhere in that range. And by then, it is dark. Uh, Santa Anita or Del Mar has to be over by 4.30 because it starts really getting dark down there. So I think from top to bottom, you're probably looking from uh, 5 o'clock until, what, 10.30 or 10.45 before the races are over. Yes. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's get down to business. You're going to take trial number one. And trial number one, and remind you, all trials will be at 400 yards. But let's talk about uh, this event. Trial number one. We got we got a field of nine to start the start the the card here. Uh, tell me about who you think are the main contenders and who you ended up as a top pick here. Well, obviously, just on form alone, Kevin's Wise Corona, who was third in the Edberg Million Futurity, is going to be one of the favorites. Although I don't think Kevin's Wise Corona is quite as good right now as he was, uh, say, three or four months ago. So we go down towards the bottom of the field, and AJ King Crown from the Heath Taylor Barn and AB Sace. Corazons from the Monte Arosa Barn. Each of those horses have had just one start over the track, and I think that they have the most right to improve. So I'm looking at the outside two horses as the ones to beat, giving the advantage to the number nine horse, AB Sace Corazons, off the much troubled trip. And you probably remember the race, uh, Jose. The horse got bumped hard from both sides and galloped out huge. Obviously needed that outing. First start since running in the Heritage Place Futurity, which was a very, very strong race. Uh, the runner up in that race, uh, came back to run second in a trial for the Texas Classic Futurity. And the third place finisher, Midnight Politics, has come back to win. And I believe ran fifth, if I recall, in the Rainbow Futurity. So a really mm -hmm. strong field that AB Sace Corazones faced two outs ago. And probably the yeah, outside post, you know, should be plenty beneficial. We've seen runners do very well. Just trying to avoid trouble on the outside could be could be uh you know beneficial here. So you're gonna go nine four eight here in the first trial of the night, 14 trials here for the two minute futurity. All right, since you didn't have much choice on what trial you were getting, it was random draw. I'll give you a, a chance at a bonus pick. Who do you like as a bonus pick in any other trial? Well, looking at a little bit of a price in one of the later trials and trial number five, mask mandate came off a layoff last time out. Really caught my eye off the trouble broke, poorly got bumped back and galloped out with a lot of energy and Mask Mandate showed good ability earlier in the year, having qualified for the Governor's Cup Futurity. Luxury brand and rock with energy are quality horses. I just don't think that they're going to run any faster than what they've already shown. So at 9-2 to two or 5-1, to one, I'm looking at Mask Mandate as a upset possibility in trial number five. All right, Ed, thank you for joining us, uh, and good luck with those elections. Um, and what uh, since I'm talking to the morning line maker, what did you make train station V later on is trial number six? A very uh, nice two to five. Yes, yes, should be. <laughs> so I, I think the horse will be one to five at post time, and yeah. I could go keep going back and watching that Golden State Million that was run into I think a nine or ten mile an hour headwind that night too. So no telling how fast. That's one of the most impressive two year old wins I've seen here in the last several years. Yeah, to me he looked like he was in another level up to you know with that with that tremendous win. All right, thank you for joining us. Have a have a good rest of your Friday. Any chance we might see you uh, here in Los Angeles anytime soon? Well, right now I'm scheduled the last weekend of uh, January. Uh, Michael Rona is going on a cruise with Kathy, so I'll be here to call the races the final Saturday and final Sunday in January. And I doubt I'll get down before that, but uh, you never know. But definitely the last uh, week in January. Okay, Ed. Thank you for joining me. Uh, good to see you, my friend, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. And uh, now up next, uh, a friend of mine, 
You've seen her. I can call her a colleague now because I've seen her on FanDuel TV. Uh, me and the Miss Traveling Lady all over the world. I even saw her at Breeders' Cup. Miss Ashley Mayu, good to see you again. Uh, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us here on this Friday evening. Thanks for inviting me, Jose. It's uh, great to see you after, I don't know, it's been a couple of weeks since I've seen you in person, but always great to talk horses and something we don't get to do often is talk no. about the quarters. Yeah, we do. Um, so when are you going to come out to Los Angeles again so we can enjoy some chicken tortilla soup? And some carne asada tacos from Tronis. I was going to bring this up. Like, please have some chicken tortilla soup for me this weekend. Hopefully. I don't know. I would like to come back out soon. I think the environment, as someone being more of a thoroughbred gal, as we know, um, I love coming to Los Al for night racing. I think it's a pretty atmosphere. I love the infield. And uh, food always sways me. So get good racing and great food. For sure. All right. Uh, I'm going to put you to work for a few minutes here. Uh, I drew names out of a hat with trial numbers. You drew Trial number two. So you got race number two, early part of the program. It'll be part of the early pick four sequence. Talk to me a little bit about uh, about this event. Race number two, who ended up, who do you think is our main contenders? Who you ended up picking on top as your topic? Yeah, you know, I looked at the, the some replays here, looked at the past performances, and I figured on paper, the number nine, I think, again, Kev, probably going to go off favorite here is two to one on the morning line and has the resume to back it. But I'm always shopping for a price, and I thought the four was really interesting here, BP cartel policy. I thought that first uh, race at Los Al was pretty good all in all, considering the way this one was able to kind of break out of the gate. And I, I thought had a little bit of issues from post two. And I think now going 400 yards is going to suit this one well. So I'm hoping close to six to one, I think would be a pretty good price on this one. So I do use him on the top spot. I did think the number nine, as I mentioned, I think again, Kev, He's really fast and looking at some of the numbers that he had, especially two back at Los Al at the 400 yard distance. I think he's been pretty impressive. He does draw a little bit more towards the outside. So they were the main two. The one that I thought was maybe sneaky, not sure about the draw is the number one opt in. Um, obviously has been pretty impressive in the last three and was second last time out with that first start at Los Al. But I thought all in all, it was a pretty good effort. So for me, Jose, these are kind of the three that stood out and I thought I could go price shopping. Yeah, BB Cartel Policy was the betting favorite last time out. And uh, that was a runner that was coming in from Ridoso, room to park prior to that. And usually I could say horses do tend to improve in their second local starter, Los Al. Mm -hmm. So you might be onto something here. A horse that obviously showed a little bit of a late kick going through 50, you get an extra 40 yards, excuse me, an extra 50 yards, and you're getting a second lo local start. So maybe being more comfortable with your surroundings, uh, that, that could be a nice price on BP Cartel Policy. And on a trial night like this, Ashley, you're probably going to get a very fair price because you're you have good horses matching up against each other, and you're not going to take a lot of you know nobody's going to take a ton of money. The money's going to be spread out, so you might you might get a, a very fair price on the four BP cartel policy. Yeah, and kind of looking at the card just as a whole, I thought some of the other ones. I mean, there's some six to five shots on the morning line. I thought this one was at least a little bit more evenly matched where there's a couple horses that'll take respect and I even think the five the high road might take a little bit of love in the spot which could maybe bump up my price on the four all right so that was your selections for trial number two ashley's going to go with 491 with the preference on top being the six one morning line of bp cartel policy all right you didn't have a choice on what trial you got it was random draw but you do get a choice now any trial you want any top pick you want give me a pick here who do you want and where are you going well, hopefully I have money left by race okay. 14 because I went to the end of the card and I think it fits well that I like BP cartel policy because the other horse that I'm curious about is the number nine moon in the blues in the 14th. Uh, okay. a, a big reason of that is if you look at that last effort, this one was fourth beaten by a length, but I thought this one had some trouble early on and was full of late run and another kind of similar story. I really like this horse finally stretching out to 400 yards. I think that's going to be a difference maker just looking at this one's several efforts so far and i think all in all um that effort last time out i thought if you watched the replay appeared a lot better than it does on paper yeah and you get an outside drawing uh, you know yeah. one thing we've learned from from your nights that you visit us a little so we're talking just get, always give a look to the outside because you could tend to have you might not be the most talented mm -hmm. or the most up-and-coming horse but the outside post could lead to a clean trip and that could make the difference between winning a quarter horse race yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's a big thing to point out, at least you know, from the quarter horse races that I've seen at Low Sal or even a couple other tracks. Um, unlike Thoroughbred, sometimes being outside is, is the right move, especially just going these distances. Yeah, for sure. All right, so recap, uh, Ashley's going to go in race number two, 491 in that order of preference, and in race 14 on the outside post uh, with the nine horse as the bonus pick. 
to wrap up the night. So you took us to the early part of the program, and then you took us all the way to the last race. I'm hope hopefully I have enough of a bankroll, Ashley. Once the 14 race come on, comes along. Well, I know what I'll be doing. I'll be on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it, looking for your picks because you know me. I always ask you, Los yes. Al, if you like. So I'll need your help in the middle half of that card because it's a it's a long night. Hey, and on um, Breeders' Cup, we have our own little our own little text chat group. Uh, and uh, I did provide with some nice big four winners, I believe, on the Saturday night of Breeders' Cup. We did. From the group chat. So the group chat cashed after uh, we had a rough day. I had a rough day betting on Saturday Breeders' Cup, but I got recovered on Saturday night on the quarters. Yeah, that's the good thing about having thoroughbreds during the day, quarters at night. I mean, it could be actually really detrimental, but for you, yes. usually it's what gets you out of jail at the end of the day. Well, uh, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time. Thank you for joining me. Always fun to catch up with you. Um, any any quick plans in the near future where we can when, when we might catch? No, you I'm with? laying low. I'm gonna get through the holidays and lay low and see what 2024 brings. But hopefully, you and the crew, we all get uh, reunited at racetrack soon. Sounds good. All right, Ashley, have a good evening, and I'll talk to you soon. See you later. And uh, we are back. We keep going here, and uh, we're lucky to have Mike Joyce. Mike, uh, my friend, good to good to catch you here for a few minutes. Uh, you were down at Demar earlier today. Uh, so we can't go to Taqueria La Mexicana on 4th Street in Long Beach, but we'll have to, we'll have to hold off for that maybe next time. Hey, a uh, uh, little uh, secret for you. I drove back. I'm actually a stone's throw. I could I could get the Los Alamos right really? now. And, yeah, I'm about five minutes from uh, Taqueria, and I'm ordering dinner. I'm waiting for the uber eats got to show up from um california cochina right down the street uh, here yes yes all right so i i, I applaud your commitment for, to hey. the back from del mar all right I, i'm glad to have you here for for a few minutes you drew lucky trial numero tres lucky trial number three here we're going to talk about on los al two million futurity trials night uh so let's take a look uh, at this race who do, you, who do you end up liking in this spot well we, you have to start with political rivalry of course you get me he's six to five morning line he's probably yeah. going to be three to five when they go into the gate. He's the winner of the Ed Burke and the, the Pacific Coast Futurities. He's a beast. He's a monster. Um, Heath Taylor has been as dominant a force in quarter horse racing here in Southern California since he's made his way back to the training ranks the last couple of years. Um, there's nothing to knock. He's good. I will say this, though, and one of the things I've learned, this will be his seventh start. Those really good horses, those really, really fast horses, they're six shooters. Anything past six races, and you don't know what you got. Mm -hmm. and that's when they fall off. The form goes away. Very few horses are good early in the year and late in the year. The only one I can think of that won the kindergarten and then won the deuce was, uh, it's a horse like Trace Passes, uh, yeah. Higher Fire, something along those lines. Those horses, they drop off after that six start. So you're at, I feel like you are at the end of the expected utility of political rivalry. Can he go out there and be his old self? Absolutely. I'm not saying he can't, but I'm saying now we're in a little bit of the unknown. So I, I like the fresh legs and the fresh faces come 2 million futurity time. Um, so I, I'm going to, I, I basically went back and forth between Ready For It and Cowgirl Off. Those are the okay. two horses. They're very similar to me. They've both got four starts under their belt. Um, they're both pretty good. They're quick enough off the block. Cowgirl Off's a little bit quicker. Um, and Cowgirl Off just, didn't fire, had a terrible start in, yep. in the Pacific Coast, but was three and a half to one that day against political rivalry. And I feel like we don't really know what she was. She drew the rail. It didn't work out. She had trouble, walked out of the gate. And so now retool back in the trials. What she might be, she might be a horse that can't put those two races back to back two weeks apart, right? She can run big in the trial, but she's just never going to really be the same horse in the final. Um, but we're betting trials this night. <laughs> yeah. So we'll worry about we'll worry about the deuce if she gets in. If you want to talk about a horse who can win on trial night, I think Cowgirl Up has a big, big chance. Great pedigree. The favorite cartels. I, I remember when Favorite Cartel was racing. Mm -hmm. Um he's become so such a useful and I I remember Kitty Up, the damn sire as well. I was actually it was a brief period of time I was um getting into the quarter horse game. I was gonna buy some horses. And Kitty Up was a horse that me and Cody Joyner actually bet on, bid on. So Kitty Up, I, I know, I know this, this, these bloodlines really well. That's uh, bottom side of the pedigree. Kitty Up, that's a Doc All Red breeding line. Mm -hmm. So Cowgirl Up, I like a lot uh, to beat political rivalry and and ready for it for Monte Rosa. Very similar reasons why I like her. Light or liking lightly raced, 
Um, he's not as quick away from the blocks, but I felt like even though he finished second last time out in that trial for the, the Golden State to unrelentless, I feel like he's better going down the racetrack, right? Like, I just feel like 400 yards, that, you know, it. Lesser Naka would always say the, the key to these horses is watching that acceleration. We always, everyone focuses on them out of the block, but it's the, yeah. the eighth pole to the 16th pole. The eighth pole to the 16th pole, you see a lot of races get one there at Los Alamitos. So, I mean, that to me is where this horse has really, in his last two starts, run done his best running. There's gaps in the racing. When we, if he qualifies, we get the finals, we might be having a different conversation because you got to prove you can do it. But if we're going to try and beat political rivalry, and I'm not going to say political rivalry doesn't qualify or run big here, but the three, six, six, three, one of those two horses is the way you beat this horse. That's those are the only two realistic chances. I think there are getting past the, the, the uh, because here's the other thing, Politico, he's in that same realm. He's making his seven start. So even though he's won three races, um, we got to see, I don't know if he likes the last, you know, 40, 50 yards of these long races when he went 440, that was, uh, it was a little much for him. They kind of ran away from him late. Um, but he's, he's made six starts. So he's another one. He's, he's kind of getting yeah. up there in, in starts. So I'm not going to try to beat a horse that's making their seventh start with another horse trying to make their seventh start. Either I'm right about that angle or I'm wrong about that angle. So and it's Calvary. And between those two you, that you mentioned, you kind of, I think you have a red or right where the Calgary up seems a little bit quicker than ready for it. But distance wise, probably ready for it has out of that Alfred mare. You know, she's, he's got that siblings up and Adam who was a big closer. They really want the 400 yards at 440 and it gets a little while to get rolling. So you might have a little more gate speed with the six, a little bit more closing kick with the three, but the fourth, they're both very talented. Yeah. They're both, they're both pretty good. And, Two-year-olds are developing horses, right? So we yeah. could see either one of those horses step up and run a better race than what they have before. I don't know that political rivalry will get any faster, but he doesn't need to, right? I mean, he's yeah. the gold standard by which there be. He just needs to stay together, and you know, he he's the horse to beat here. But um, you know, like I said, seven start. That's when things start getting a little dicey about whether they're going to continue to throw fire those bullets. All right, I'll write you. I'll write you. I'll write you down at six three four, six three four, three six four. Perfect. One of that order. So six three four there for Mike Joyce in trial number three. All right, it was a random draw. You got this trial. You didn't get a choice. Now I'm giving you a choice. Any trial you want, any pick you want, any price you want. Give me your bonus pick. What race are we going to? I don't like to wait around, so I'm going race number one. All right. Uh, there was a great Saturday Night Live skit with John Lovitz, and he was playing the character that this horse I like is named after. And he would sit there and he would order food. And instead of paying for it, he would draw a picture on a napkin and go, I'm Picasso. I'm going with Picasso. <laughs> Seven horse here for uh, Jose Flores. Quick, likes to run down the racetrack, lightly raced, Cruz Mendez up, everything about this horse I like. And I know everybody's going to be going to AB Seis Corazones on the outside mm -hmm. for Monte Rosa. Uh, horse qualified to the Heritage Place. I like the fact that they kind of, you know, wrapped the skeleton up in bubble wrap and waited until the end of the year, and they got the allowance under his belt to get him ready. Um, but I think he's going to get a lot of steam, and I don't know that he's better than Picasso. I think Picasso clearly first two starts up in Rio Doso, horse was in top, might not have been ready to roll. Comes down to Los Alamitos, Jose Flores gets him primed and ready to go. Maiden allowance, and now they're rolling. Uh, very seldom do you see the the top notch quarter horses as two-year-olds use their conditions because they just want to go trial, 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 which makes sense. You're paid into all these yeah. trials. You use the trials like your allowance races. I get it. But I think coming into his barn, coming from another barn, Jose, who's one of the best trainers at Los Alamitos and has been for 30 years. For many, many years. He, he's got the ability to – he had the ability and the luxury of getting a few starts. This horse was beaten five lengths in each race. Anything he does with it is gravy. Maiden race. Horse figures it out. Allowance base. Let's see what we got. He gets faster. He runs a bigger number, and he gets to go a little bit further. And now that sets him up for the four hundred. So I like Picasso a lot. Ninety-two morning line. All right. So I'm going to tell you who actually was the handicapper. The got trial one, and it was Ed yeah. Burgard. Ed Burgard got trial number one. So you got a bonus pick in his trial. But I will let you that you got maybe maybe at least one person that has a bonus pick in your trial. So this format is pretty cool. You have different opinions. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to see how you match up with Ed Burgard in that first round. Oh boy. Yeah. I, Ed, by the way, the, the greatest 
handicapper of quarter horses of all time is Ed Burgart. The greatest yes. morning line maker mm -hmm. of any breed is Ed Burgart. Um, the greatest quarter horse announcer of all time is Ed Burgart. He was he was an industry unto himself yes. in this game. And um, I have to tell you, I, he spoiled me because I did, you know, 12, 15 years at Los Alamitos. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't realize, I mean, I, I knew it at the time, but it was glaring when you look at other racetracks, um, how good his morning line yes. was in comparison to others. I mm -hmm. mean, he was spot on just about every race. It was just, it was uncanny. He's just so good. And he's still doing the morning line here for Los Amigos for us. And he does a tremendous job. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a pleasure to have him. So uh, we'll have to, we'll, we'll get to watch him here, analyze race number one for us. But the last time you were on the quarters was for Ed Burgard final race call. The yes. 2030, that was 2019, I believe. Yep, right before the pandemic. And Caleb and I started the show. We're on the desk. You guys booted us out. So me and As Caleb, we, should we, have. we went to a, kind of a reporter mode. I uh, actually yeah. did an interview in Espanol with some of our writers. Uh, he handled some other reporting duties. And then for the final race, the two-minute futurity, Caleb and I went up to the booth to hang out with Ed with a camera operator to record him in the booth for his final race call. During the parade, Ed gave out a horse that he liked. I didn't realize that this was a horse that you liked too. Cartel Just Rocking was your pick, just like Ed Burgard's pick, and the horse goes off at what twenty something to one for John Cooper. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was it was a great story all around. First of all, for Cooper, who's you know one of the the, the OGs of yeah. Los Alamitos, one of the you know long time very good top notch trainers, had some of the best horses. I think people think of Cooper the first horse they think of is Sina Lanti. Uh, Just Cartel Rocking though was a, a nice one for him to have as well. Um, so it was a really great story. He was, of course, the trainer of Moonist. Don't forget yeah. that. Was another fantastic animal. Mm -hmm. um, so and every and it was it was Burgard's last call, and that was I didn't realize it was the last time I hosted the uh, the, the two million futurity. Uh, I spent the early days of my career just waiting for the opportunity to host the two million futurity and the champion of champions and the uh, all American futurity, and I had to follow in Todd's footsteps. And they were not shows he ever wanted to give up, and I don't blame him. Um, one of the great great races here in California, the richest race in California run. And uh, it, it should be a great night of trials. 14 trials really reflects just how good it's a great gambling start to finish. What, oh, one of my favorite things to bet on is trial night. These are going to be the, the night to bet trifectas and superfectas. Los Alamitos has $1 minimum trifectas. That makes a difference. Trifectas and superfectas. Yes. Trifecta and superfectas. These trials nights, these are the best you want to focus on. You only have to be right once. If you like one right. price in one race, go vertically. Make sure you cash something you yeah. know, of course, pick fours and, and all the rolling pick threes. You want to cash something. But if you have an opinion, make sure you cash on it in that vertical race. Yeah. Against the yeah. Absolutely, man. It's it's I when I started in, at TVG all those years ago, I remember the first night I went to Los Alamitos and I looked around and I was like, man, I've made it like mm -hmm. this is big time from a kid from Wyoming. You know, I, I had so many nights seeing Los Alamitos up on the, the screens and the OTB and it's like the dead of winter and. You know, we were watching. It was just, it was big time to get out there. Big, it's big awesome. time. It is awesome. All right, my friend. Thank you for joining me on this uh, Friday evening now. Uh, enjoy dinner. And uh, maybe we'll talk to you uh, upcoming on trial side this Sunday night. All right, Jose. Thanks for having me, man. See you. Have a good night. One. And we keep it rolling here. Another original, I would call you an original quarters member. My friend, Dave Weaver. Dave, uh, welcome to the program. I know you were down at Del Mar today, but thank you for, for joining me here for this little show. Glad to be here, man. That Mike Joyce never shuts up. I didn't even know no. if we were ever going to, he was ever going to end. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. But I'm used to that. You know, yeah. we, we were doing it for 20 years on the quarters or 15. Yeah. I, I would say me and Les, um, you know, the, the diehard originals, 2000, yeah. 2001, maybe when somewhere back in the uh, very early 2000s, Todd Shrupp was there a lot, but uh, the good old days. I was, I can't believe I've been in that chair now seven years. Can you believe that, Dave? Seven I years can't. already. Honestly, that, it's a long time, right? It's I mean, like, for you. It's like, like that. Like, it's just, yeah, seven years in that chair, of course. Uh, behind, I was always there behind the scenes, just hanging out with you guys, being a gambler before I actually made it to that side of the desk. So it's been a long time before, before that, you know, plenty of Kicking plenty, ass. Keep doing what you're doing. And we'll try. We'll try. But uh, I wanted to reference was the quarters one of your first ever appearances on air as an analyst? 
Uh, so if you remember back in the day, we would not even show Los Al. We would, we would, we would be on at 9 a.m. and go off at 9 p.m. Yeah. So we were on for 12 hours. Now we're on for 24 hours. But there was a time where we would go off the air at like race four at Los Al. Like, yeah. that's it. But, you know, like, what the heck is that? But things have changed, right? So yes. now Dr. Allred has graced us with it. Sit there and we've got obviously a great relationship where we're going to stay on all the way through. And then now we go into the night. But once there was a point where they needed to add those extra hours, that's kind of where I filled that role because I was already on the air a few times. And then they added that slot, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm a low sal guy. This just made sense for me to get that opportunity to, to do that. But that's kind of where, where I came in when, whatever that was. And it was very, very in our infancy yeah. of TVG as a network where we changed from the nine to nine to going longer. So I don't know exactly what date that was, but yeah, there were some shifts before that, that I was on. But Los Al basically gave me my, you know, my opportunity. Yeah, it was a, your diploma, your graduation diploma there. Uh, I think so. From, from Los Alamitos. All right, we're going to put you to work here for a little bit. Uh, numbers out of a hat, and you drew Lucky Trout numero cuatro. You're right after okay. Mike Joyce. So you're following in the, in the footsteps. Of, you, can't you can't just get away from Mike. You, you're like, oh, yeah. he's next to him. I was listening to him, and he was really, I mean, I not not to be rude, but I don't want to talk as long as he did. Let's just come in. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So let's go. Race four. Give me your top three picks. Where are you going with uh, in trial number four? So this is the end of the pick four. So this yes. is a very important lay. We got to get yeah. alive and we got to pick the winner. When you look at this race, this is a deep field. How is it that with 14 different trials, we got three Golden State Million qualifiers yes. in one race? I mean, uh -huh. this race, it, it came up very, very tough. And I'm going to go with the horse that was not in that final. Ooh. I like the five horse, favorite Nova. He was in a qualifier. He tried to get it. was in qual a, a trial. He did not qualify, but he was huge in that race. We're going to go back to October the 8th. Yep. And from the rail, he wins the trial after almost hitting Gary Brinson out of the gate. I mean, here's a horse yeah. that like swerved in yeah. towards the rail, got – La I mean, he broke last, according to the chart, and it's accurate. And then he somehow comes out and wins. That was his first start at 400 yards. So this is the horse that definitely wants the distance. I'm not convinced that every horse in this race wants the distance. And with a cleaner break, now drawn in between horses, mm -hmm. this horse can go much faster than that 2018 clocking that was not fast enough to get him in the Golden State Million final. So I think he's actually going to be a little bit overlooked as well. Because Eddie Willis has two horses. Justine rode both the five and the six in the trials for the Golden State. She goes to the uh, six horse, Unrelentless, yeah. who was the second place finisher in the Golden State Million. So four to one morning line, we might get six to one. I, I think the five could be a little bit under the radar. The six is going to take money without a doubt. Golden State Million for three, runner up for sure. And you know the nine is going to take significant amount of money because you got the outside post. You got a Golden State Money finalist, Monte Rosa. So – I feel like you're going to get a float up on your on your top pick. I think so too. And and when you go back and you watch the final of the Golden State Million, I, I thought Unrelentless had a perfect trip, broke clean, yeah. broke straight, never really did anything wrong, and was a solid second. But I thought the nine was the better horse that day, favorite city, swerving in and out. I mean, this horse is just going out and then in yeah. and then out and then like he never was able to really ever have a fluid stride he was always kind of fighting the rider now that might be a bad thing because it could happen again and he's drawn the outside he broke out in the trial and never really was able to overcome that and what did he get he got sixth in that yeah. field still picked up a pretty nice paycheck for doing that but when you go back to the trial for the three horses that qualified favorite city unrelentless and famous cartel jesse the number three yep favorite city he was 1997. Yeah. I mean, that was a that was a very fast trial. Unrelentless was uh, 2008, and Famous Cartel Jesse was 2007. So his trial race, we know how fast he can go when he's got his mind on running, and he just didn't he didn't have a good trip in, in the uh, in the futurity. So I think I like horses that shown too that they're good in trials because this is what it comes down to they need to run fast with 14 trials and over 100 horses trying to get in with only 10 spots 
He's going to fly from that outside post. Is he going to be good enough to beat the five if the five comes out straight? I don't think so. But the nine is a horse that you really have to respect. And between Unrelentless and uh, Famous Cartel Jesse, who were second and fourth in the Golden State, I thought Unrelentless was the better horse. So that's who I threw in for third. So my numbers are going to be five, nine, six, but I'm going to take the price on top. I like it. Well, Dave, we're recording this Friday evening here after the Mar. Uh, last night, I didn't sleep. I sent in, I worked all night to work on all the comments for every horse for the nine lines. I'm running about three hours of sleep, but I'm going to share with you that this race, you went five, nine, six. My mm -hmm. selections were submitted at 2 a.m. last night. I went five, nine, six. I'm in total Let's agreement. Go. I like the five. Favorite Nova. I know the others are going to take money because of the Golden State, uh, Golden State Million finalists. But favorite Nova, if you look at that race, I'm with you. The horse shouldn't have, should not have won that race with that kind of trip, and this still fought on. I think favorite Nova is going to love the extra distance. Uh, so I don't know if I'm running a little bit of sleep, Dave, but I'm in total agreement <laughs> with you here in this trial. I'm not running on much sleep either. You know, most people are going to start and look at that futurity and then stop right there. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to look at everybody else. I looked at the seven horse, Fearless Prince. He mm -hmm. was also in a trial for the uh, the Golden State. I didn't like his race. He won his trial, but the seven like wiped everybody out. Like he got it really things to go his way and barely got up to win by a nose. I didn't like the way he really won that race. And it wasn't really in a fast time either. So I didn't like him. You know, so what it leaves for me is that fa favorite Nova is kind of the, the the up and comer in this race. So we're on the same page. Yeah, we are we are on the same page here. All right, uh, you didn't get a choice of what trial you got, but thank you for that analysis. Now you get a choice. Any trial you want, any horse you want, where are you looking for your bonus pick here tonight? Yeah, I wanted to do a little bit of a price with my uh, with my bonus play. So I'm going to go to race number two. Okay. And this is a horse that I needed last time out in the late pick four. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's this horse. Like when you watch a replay and you go, oh, <laughs> That, yes. yes. This is a horse that I thought got very unlucky in his race because he was three to five. Like, I thought he was a slam dunk coming in from Rio Doso. He was in, in the Heritage Place Futurity. Like, this is a horse that has a lot of back class in Oklahoma and New Mexico. And he didn't break all that sharp. And the horse just to his inside, a really sharp, I think it was a Jose Flores horse named Picasso. And that's who Mike likes, who has his yes. bonus play in a different race. But Picasso got a flyer from post one. I was in post two with BP Cartel Policy, and uh, just like that, I'm down like a length, and yep. he's drifting out into me, like you did to Sophie Cinch. Yes, remember that? Five years ago. Yep. He, like, drifted, and he kept, like, cutting me off. I'm like, what's going on? There was no inquiry because the one was clear, but he still was making me, like, not be able to push, you know? So it was a very kind of timid ride because there's not much he can do, and then once he finally got a little bit of run late, he flew and he got second, but it, it, with, with any sort of luck tonight, this is a very good bet at six to one in the morning line because this horse can run. We know it. It just yeah. uh, was an unfortunate trip for him last time out. And you know, he's going to like the 400 yards because he's already had a chance to go 440. He was second in all American futurity trial. So I think the extra distance from that race last time at 350 and a race over the track. He'd never been at Los Al before. I think that's yeah. key. As well, so I'll take race number two, the four, BP Cartel Policy as my as my bonus play six to one. I like it. I like it a lot. By the way, that trial was assigned to Ashley Mayu, so we'll have to Ashley reference to see what she liked in that trial, as that was a trial she got for analysis. Well, I recorded everybody off off kind of uh, all around off kilter, so I'll piece everything together. Uh, I want to say thank you for for joining us here and, and taking a few minutes out of your time. I, I got to work. We got to work together on the quarters maybe about a, what, a month, month and a half ago? Yeah, I think so. Right. So um, maybe maybe we'll we'll do it again coming up this uh, this wrapping up season of, of uh, Los Angeles. I'm always down for it. As I can't believe we're up to the, the, the deuce trials already, which means we got the big weekend, second Saturday and Sunday of, of December, mm -hmm. deuce and the champion of champions. The year went by like that. It really did. It really did. Speaking about yours and speaking us about Sophie Cinch, how's Sophie doing? Our babies are no longer babies. No. My Jackie, my bad beat therapist, she's already a, a blossoming second grader, Dave. And uh, and Sophie is, is doing awesome. She's 10, uh, yeah. fifth grade, not really picking winners anymore, but we're going to get her out <laughs> to the racetrack and have her give us some, some cinches. But yeah, she, she's a great kid. Student of the month, uh, right off the bat, first uh, 
first week of the year. So she's uh, paying attention in class, which is a good thing. That's what it's all about. All right, Dave. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Uh, best of luck with your selections. And we'll have to rewatch the show to see where everybody landed. Bonus plays here. Bonus plays there. Should be a fun show. Well, tonight, 14 races. Everybody's looking forward to it for sure. And for the placement call players, they remind them it's only the first 10. Right. Because I've seen it before. I, I think Del Mar might have had like 11 or 12 races one time during the summer. And they actually started it. It was the last 10. So yeah. I was paying attention. How is Los Al going to do it? Yes. It's not place 14 it's no. place 10 so it plays pick all races one through 10 yes. and that is a bet i'm going to be making it's my favorite bet we need to get a little bit more popular out there yes. pools usually between maybe 14 to eighteen thousand, somewhere in that range which is nice if you could scoop it all it's a five-figure payday but it's fun because you don't have to win you have to only be first or second to advance I, I joke with professor g day that it's the same 300 of us playing into the pools every day because the pools For consist sure. It's Pretty like the sure. same 300 of us just betting the place we call because the pool is always consistent. That's how the pick six used to be. Remember the carriers used to be always around the same area in the pick six, right? Now has we need 300 more people so it can yes. double. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like it's the same 300 of us playing in the place we call and we love it. We can't quit it. Indeed. Right. It's, my, my, it's my 192, your 108, somebody's yeah. 16, somebody's yeah. 32. Maybe there's a big player out there that plays 576 or whatever, but yeah. It's always right in that kind of that same wheelhouse. All right, Dave. Thank you for joining me. Uh, have a good rest of your Friday night. And uh, maybe I'll see you out in the quarter sometime soon. Appreciate it. Thanks. And uh, we are back now joined by a very special guest, Miss Megan Devine. Megan, great to see you. Uh, I know. It's been so long. <laughs> been, it's been a while, but it's, it's, it's great to, that you had some time to join me and, and, and be part of this fun little show that we do here at LosAmios.com. First of all, how you been? And uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Yeah, I've been really well. I Since I saw you, I moved to Kentucky. I got married. I had a baby. So uh, all those things are good. But I have to say, I really miss our little duo at yeah. Los Al on TVG. That, those are some of my most favorite shows. <laughs> we had a lot of fun there out there, even though yeah. sometimes in the winter, it people don't believe me, Megan, but you mm -hmm. can attest to me. It gets cold out there. It is Southern California. Do you remember I had a heated blanket? I yes. brought my own heated blanket. <laughs> Like people don't believe me, it gets freezing cold yeah. the show at night. It really does. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I miss our shows. We had a lot of fun <laughs> together. Uh, good to catch up. Ha by the way, since I last saw you, you because you you made a baby. You made a baby. I know. Since I last Crazy. saw you, it's so, like a little little human, and she just turned one uh, this past yeah. Sunday. So yeah, I mean, she's like a full blown human so far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, already. <laughs> Happy late birthday to Miss uh, Miss Lily Rose, right? That's her name. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we're all in on horse racing, so we, Lily for the Oaks and Rose for the Derby. So I figured that was the way we go. Perfect. I love yeah. it. As exactly. you know, I've got my Jackie mm -hmm. Ariana, and you just met off their little AJ Abraham. Yeah, and I know. So great already. And and so that. much hair. My baby has yes. like no hair. I'm still waiting for it. Maybe by June, <laughs> I'll have hair. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna put you to work here for a few minutes. Uh, okay. I do names out of a hat with numbers. You mm -hmm. do trial number five, numero cinco. So let's talk about race number five, who you think are the main contenders, and eventually who you landed as your top pick there. Okay, so I went down the rabbit hole with this, okay. Jose. I mean, I I was watching all kinds of replays, and then I was skipping yeah. around. And I was like, okay, well, in my bonus pick, I like this horse, I like this horse, but yeah. I had to focus on yes. here. But I really felt like it was so important. Obviously, you got some great comments. Um, you are the writer of those in the daily racing yes. forum, which I didn't know, but I scrolled all the way down to the bottom and it said Jose Contreras. So I was like, Oh, that's why I like these comments. Yeah. But, uh, I, I thought luxury brand, the three horse is the horse to be, I mean, they're taking the blinkers off. So he raced with them for the past two races and they are coming off today uh, or when he races. But yeah. I thought that watching the replay for this horse, I mean, he lugged in the entire way. He went from the seven hole to the two hole uh, in the short time of going 400. And, you know, he changed leads twice too. So he was really erratic throughout the stretch. And, and I just feel like with the blinkers coming off, he's going to be able to see his competition a little bit better. I'm hoping that that kind of helps him with the issue that he had with not running straight because he'll be able to yeah. see the horses around him. Um, and obviously the, the fastest distance is a straight path, right? So yeah, if he too. can kind of, you know, not do what he did last time with lugging in so much and changing his leads and he can stay on that lead and he can run straight, I, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. He's obviously been pretty successful in his four races 
distances so far. He's got two seconds to, uh, to first. Um, the fact that he's already gone the distance, I, I love that. And he had a really, really good time last time, despite, again, not running straight. So I, I thought that he was the horse to beat. He's got some great bloodlines being a half to multiple grand stakes winner flashback. Um, so yeah, I had to go with luxury brand. But I did initially think I was going to go with the Philly rocking with energy. Um, mm -hmm. He's done really well against the boys. Yeah. I, I will say... I love second off the layoff, the slow start out last time. I thought, you know, she should be more fit here, second off the bench. Um, but when I when I went back and I watched the replays, just from a physical standpoint, I had to go with Luxury Brand over Rockin' With Energy. To me, I, I just thought he had a bit more power to him. And and again, hopefully the equipment change will really help him to, to get that straight line. I think you're reading it similar to me, where you both agree that the three could be the quickest out of the gate and the four Rockin' With Energy should be closing ground late based on what she's done up to this point. So right. we're kind of reading this race the same, but you do got a price underneath here, underneath top two. You're giving a look to maybe the eight horse right here in this spot. Yeah, the eight horse is uh favorite politician. This one, you know, there was some legitimate trouble last time. Obviously, this is a horse that's a maiden. He's had three races so far. His best result was a fourth place finish, um, beaten by just the length last time. But, you know, anytime you have something obscure happen, and last time the rider losing the iron obviously yeah. was going to be a factor, um, I, I think you have to pay it some attention. You know, this is a gelding that's run at three different tracks so far for those three efforts. It's been a long shot, but I feel like he's kind of learning each and every time. His numbers yeah were improving from that first start. He was in against some tough company. You know, he hit the gate. He hesitated at the start. So while, yes, it does seem like, you know, he hasn't shown what some of those other horses have in this field, I thought for a price underneath, if you're playing a try, you know, if you want to put have some value under there, maybe you go to a horse like Favorite Politician, you get the rider change back to Brooks, um, yep. which I like the fact that he's already ridden this horse before. And obviously with Eddie Willis um, and the credentials of the jockey and trainer and, and their percentage together, I mean, 35% for the jockey yeah. trainer is a pretty nice number. And this is an all-time combo. Like they yeah. have so much mounts together. They're like, you know, they, they know each other. They, 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 they work very good together as a team. All right. So yeah, you're going to exactly. work three, three, four, eight in race number five with your top pick being luxury brand. All right. So mm -hmm. if you had a random draw, you'd have a choice of what trial you got. You got crowd five, you yep. get a bonus pick any trial you want, any horse you want, uh, Give me, uh, let me know. Where do you want to go here for your bonus pick? Okay, so I ended up on okay. race number three, but I skipped all around. I thought I was going to go to um, race number seven that had Southern Divine in there for the hunch play and also a filly that's really talented. And then I thought maybe I'd go to race number one because I really like Kevin's wise Corona, yeah. uh, despite the fact that his worst effort was at the distance. But I thought his back legs nearly came out from under last time. So I thought that was going to be my play. But I did land on the three who I just found out about five minutes ago when he told me is the six to five favorite. So I am a chalk eating weasel, but <laughs> this is a horse that I, I didn't, I wasn't initially kind of looking at that race, but I watching the replay with rocking with energy and Kevin's wise Corona um, three races back. I was like, who is that horse? Yeah. And we ended up winning that day, but just the stride length on this horse, the just the sheer power that he showed, he was super professional breaking from the gate. You know, even when he maybe had a little bit of a scramble at the gate a few times, he was still able to pull it out. And the way that he hits his best stride late, you know, yes, he hasn't gone the 400 before he's topped out at 350, but it seems to me like that's not going to be as much of an issue for him because he's so robust that it seems like he needs that extra distance in order to get full power. So I actually really like the fact that we're going to see this horse go a little bit further today because he he's just, it appears watching the replays that he's a massive horse with a huge stride who hit it late. Yeah, and political rivalry, like you mentioned. If you watch those replays, and he's undefeated, but you know, besides that, <laughs> he's like that. He's undefeated, yeah, but he's no, so no, professional. No. That's what makes him undefeated up to this point. Right, and he takes the break well. He's a strong yeah. finisher. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. I mean, you can't exactly. really find a lot of faults for him, and that's why he's undefeated. Well, and you know this too, because you're talking about two-year-old horses and a lot of the time, yes, it is, of course, the physical of the horse, you know, are they developed early enough that they're going to be as powerful? Are they, you know, 
trainable. And I think that's part of it too, is like the physical component and then the mental component too. And based off of his past performances with the six wins so far, it looks like he's just a true professional from the start. He's gotten it. Granted, he's a gelding too, which probably helps him with that. Um, but, you know, I, I just thought that against so many of these horses that are still kind of finding their stride, or some even have just one race before they come into this day or two races or so, you know, they're still putting it together. Whereas it seems like this horse, I don't think he's had his best day yet. I still think it's ahead of him with the more distance and he's already done so well i think he's just gonna continue to do that on sunday all right well very well stated right there all right so in race five megan is gonna go three four eight and her bonus pick will be in race number three the number four horse there chalky uh, weasel. Yes. <laughs> hey look we need watch we need i'm people. gonna be the curse and he's gonna lose for the first time it's we, fine <laughs> we need to pick four singles anywhere we can get them because yes. we got three pick fours with the big card so uh this is not there's not you know any pick here is helpful so Thank you for carving out a few minutes out of your time to join yeah, me. Yeah, uh, it was fun. It's good to see you again. Yes, it's nice to see you always. Let the viewers know. Uh, what's, I know you always have some side, some side projects going on. I know mother <laughs> motherhood is right now is top priority, um, mm -hmm. but you always have some side projects going on. How is yeah. how's Cody Photography going, by the way? Uh, it's going really well. Of course, my husband, Curtis Cody, uh, yeah. the owner of Cody Photography, he's they've 30 racetracks, 30 plus across the country. So we are always busy with those. I like to joke that I'm a mom now. That's one of my jobs. I'm also like a zookeeper at this mm -hmm. farm that we have. Yep. So we've got horses and goats and chickens and ducks and cats. Right, and dogs. And I don't even know. Mm -hmm. So I am like a part-time vet, but it's fine. Um, and then I, of course, have my own company too, Vidhorse, which uh, is a creative agency specifically for the horse industry. But we uh, have a, quite a few bourbon contacts too now here in Kentucky. So it's been a lot of fun doing that, making uh, social media content and videos and, you know, providing my broadcasting services too. And I'm sure a few more things on the horizon because you know me, I've always got stuff up my sleeve. Always, always, <laughs> always. Even, even out here, you always have something going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love the freelance life. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Great to see you. Um, you're nice doing you. well. Glad to see you. Uh, hope we get to talk soon again. And anytime, anytime I can get you for a few minutes, I, I'm going to be bugging you. Okay. I'm going to be okay. bugging you anytime. anytime yes. We, yes. We, we you have my phone number. Me. You know where to reach me. Yes. You can find me on Twitter too or yes. wherever else. And I would love to join you. All right. Uh, thanks for joining me. Have a good rest of your Friday evening out there. And I'll talk to you soon. Best of luck on Sunday. And uh, now welcome back. I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Martha Clausen. We go way back, back to the AQHA Racing Aces Day, way, way, way back when we met back in the day. Uh, you're doing a little bit of everything. I see you here, there, and everywhere. Uh, you're you're doing a lot for Horseshoe Indianapolis, of course. But uh, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining me. And how are you doing? Oh, my pleasure, Jose. Yeah, love working with you and Rachel uh, and the group at Horseshoe Indy and kind of still have my gigs in Texas and Louisiana. Yeah. And uh, do miss seeing you all at Los Al. I think craziest thing is when I last saw you, Ariana was a baby. Yeah, <laughs> and now she's a toddler. Yeah, she just went running. She yeah, was she running was. around the couch right now. And yeah. she's, she's a big girl. Between her and my crazy Wyman Rhymer Thor, we're going to have a three ring circus here. But what the heck? It's almost the holidays. You know? So if, if, if Thor starts barking, noodles <laughs> might stop barking, my, my golden doodle. So we might have a bark off. We might have a bark off here in between the show. Why so, not? You know? Why not? So Martha, I drew names out of a hat with numbers. You drew trial number six. But when I saw these names, who were in these trials and who was in this final and the impressive winner, you know this name very well. Train Station V, but you also know the connections very well. Yeah, I was so excited when I got that trial. It was like, yay, you know, because I go way back with Heath Taylor and also uh, with uh, Francisco Calderon. Mm -hmm. They're both great guys. They're based in Texas. And that's just my kind of uh, vibe there with those guys. It, it, they, uh, This is a huge, huge year for Francisco. He yeah. uh, just in the winning that Golden State uh, Futurity, he actually broke the record that had been set by Heath uh, with uh, GR Carter for Stoli's. Uh oh, is that a mess? Do we have to start again? No, no, no. Go, go, go ahead. Okay, sorry. I don't know what happened. I'll cut it. I'll okay. Cut it. Uh, okay, uh, but anyway, we um, uh, Heath and Heath and uh, Heath Taylor is amazing. And back in two thousand eight, uh, with Stoley's winner G. R. Carter set the record for money earned by a jockey in one year. And that was in All American Futurity. So, and then you know a couple months later this year. So, what is that? Seven years later, yeah. you got. Um, Francisco Calderon breaking the record set by G.R. Carter. It, the deal is this kid's only 29 years old. He started in Texas. I'm so familiar with him when the Sam Houston Futurity uh, 
absolutely wonderful, humble young man, worked hard. His uncle, Ignacio Bustamante, was a Texas rider, told him, if you want to learn to ride, you have to learn the horse. He started yeah. mucking horses, doing mm -hmm. everything it took. And to this day, as now he's the top ranked earning jockey in the, in the country so far in the standings, so humble, so grateful for all the opportunities he's had. So I was really excited when I got to talk about him. Uh, and he likes this horse, Jose. The funniest thing is he pointed out that never in, in the times he's ridden him, the horse doesn't break at all. Terrible no. breaker. Yeah. But once he, his exact words to me in a feature I wrote about him just last month is that once he breaks, he doesn't break. Everybody's in front of him. But then yeah. two or three jumps into the race, he just flies. He's yeah. already a millionaire. How crazy is that? Yeah. I mean, he was, you know, uh, fastest qualifier for the Golden State. So I, I always hate to say you can't beat him, you know. But although we did see in Indiana that redheaded beach, you and I didn't want to try and beat yeah. her either, did yeah. you? When you've mm -hmm. got a quality horse, quality connections, Steve Burns, I have so much respect for him as a breeder. Unbelievable and favorite. Yeah. All three of my horses in this race are favorite cartels. So we're going to see if I can not jinx them, but get the favorite cartel trio. Well, he, he just looks like he's in another level right now. Like he's yeah. in a league of his own. He really, truly uh, does look like that. All right. So train station B, obviously the horse on top. But who's the horse underneath it? He, he wrote down 896, right? Yeah, I got 896. Nine is verbosity. I love the name. Do you, yeah. do you sometimes just get drawn to names? Well, Very anyway, boss. you know, yeah. in quarter horse racing, and you and I do a lot of handicapping, we know that you can't just go by one result. If you see that a horse was bumped in their last yeah. effort, you know, they're not going to win. But he did come, you know, he, he ran well. But, um, you know, basically, he's been in the money in his last four races. Favorite cartel, Jose Flores is the trainer, and uh, Cruz Mendez, who's one of your, my gosh, most venerable yeah. riders out there in, in California. Uh, so I liked, I liked his chances. And of course, you got to give them a break if, if you see you know if they have a clean trip and they finish out of the money or they can't win that's one thing well that's like <laughs> train station b he doesn't need a clean trip he just no. got all that speed yeah. but verbosity i think is going to be, be able to crack the uh the top three although you know i'm really rooting for train station yeah. uh b obviously to go all the way yeah so favorite player was a debut winner you think you can improve here going 400 well, you know, isn't that crazy? You know, <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Again, you got the favorite cartel. Uh, you, you know, the way I looked at that horse, very lightly raced, okay? Very yes. lightly raced, but to break the maiden at first asking, kind of impressive. Um, dis decent post, I thought, you know, not wedged, you know, on the outside or the inside. And, uh, you know, why not? You know, you've got to have a long shot sometimes in these trials too. Only other one, I didn't even mention it to you, that might spoil my favorite cartel try. Fector would be number two, good time. Okay. Uh, a lot of respect for Chris O'Dell. And that horse has some back class too. So, you know, what a great trial you picked for me. Thank you very much, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> like to draw here. So I got you, I got you as 8962, 8962 here, Thank race you. number six. All right. right. You get one bonus pick. Any trial you want, any horse you got, any horse you want, where are we going? Well, this is funny because I don't know, for some reason I gravitated toward race 11, which okay. I understand Rachel and I guess Caleb has it. You can have three opinions in this yes. one, so, which will be fun. I mean, look, we're all, hey, let me tell you, Rachel and I have, we are like sisters. Well, like yeah. maybe like more like mother daughter. Okay. <laughs> we have tremendous respect for our handicapping. We love to like slug it out. So uh, number three was my pick in that AJ Shining. Now this is a 200,000 heritage place sale graduate broke his uh, maiden May 26th at uh, Rio Doso for Heath Taylor. And then last time out was a favorite, very lightly raced, you know, and again, I'm going to make that possible uh play for a lightly raced horse just yeah. two races fairly well spaced top connections and gonna face some monsters in that race so it would be kind of unusual if between the three of us we didn't pick the winner but you know it's quarter horse racing it's trial time who knows but that's a horse that i'm going to be looking out for in the 11th race all right so martha is going eight uh, race six eight nine six two and the bonus pick race 11 number three Right. Martha, thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time to chat and catch up. Good. Always good to see you. Uh, and uh, tell us uh, where can the, the viewers and the horse keep up with your work? What are you doing? What What's keeping you busy right now? 
Well, I do a lot of writing for Stallion Search, and next month I will be at Evangeline. I'll be doing the interviews for that big weekend that they have, December 15th and 16th. You guys will be pretty busy out there. I think that is that um, that's a Champion of Champions weekend as well. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but they have a million-dollar race at uh, Evangeline, the LQHBA, Louisiana Million. I can't miss that race. I love all the people. So many Texas and Louisiana connections from there. And uh, it ought to be interesting to see how that goes. In the past, it's been Rogelio Marquez's uh, race to win. He's got, he breeds a lot of his horses in Louisiana, and they've won quite a few times. But the trials are coming up at the end of the month for that one. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for catching up and uh, joining us here. Have a good rest of your Friday afternoon, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. My pleasure, Jose. The Los Alamitos traditional pick six continues to rise. On July 2nd, a carryover of nearly $15,000 led to a total pool of over $150,000. On July 9th, a carryover of $15,000 led to a total pool of nearly $160,000. Plus, with no jackpot provisions, the Los Alamitos pick six can pay big time every time. And if we don't have a carryover going into Sunday night, we'll add 10 grand to the pool. That's right, the fast rising Los Alamitos pick six is one of the country's best. And we are back here taking a look at trial number seven, race number seven on the 14 uh, trial night on Sunday night. Rotating handicapper for each and every trial. George, you drew lucky trial number seven. George Duarte is our Equivate chart carter at Los Amigos. George, how are you doing on this Friday? I'm doing good. Uh, you glanced at the trials. Obviously, I'm sure you looked ahead. Uh, we'll talk about your bonus pick and who you ended up going with. Uh, but talked about this race number seven. Race number seven, uh, who do you like in this spot? That's funny. This is uh, race number seven is my favorite number, so I was like, all right, I'll take it. And then I looked right, at the race. Go. Okay. I looked at the race, and it's the races I always end up losing on. It's always <laughs> where, you know, like the obvious favorite is the outside horse. Yeah. And it's fast, but I don't think she wants to go 400 yards. She hasn't, uh, she hasn't beaten open company. So it's always a horse I always want to beat. And then they always beat me going 20 20, and I'm just frustrated, annoyed. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm going back to the well. I'm still gonna go against her. And uh my top pick is uh a horse that's already beaten her. Yeah in HRH World Cartel. Um last time, I mean I couldn't fit how much trouble he had last time. He got yeah. he lunged, bumped into uh an opponent here, favorite nuke, mm -hmm. and then horses started lugging in, just bumping them all around. So he never had a chance. He's bred well. I know he wants 400 yards. I just I just hope that, you know Rodrigo keeps his path next to him on the outside yeah. and then i think he's gonna as long as he's within range on southern divine i think he's gonna out finish her the final uh 50 yards and you know at eight to one i'll, t I'll take my chances to beat this even money shot yeah cause i remember that race when they matched up on the edberg or edberg million trials night and hr just looked much sharper and he had a much a better trip on the outside and he, he and you're right looking back at that race he, he looks like he wants the 400 yards right yeah, and yeah, the breeding. And you know, he had, I forgot the siblings, but yeah, they all want a distance. And and I think Juan usually always has one at least fire in the two million trials. And I'm hoping it's this one. All right, so you went seven nine four. Talk to me about the four here, Scopatory. Uh, that's another favorite I wanted to beat. I mean, it's only going to be his third start. He's bred well in White Knight Bar, but he's been off, comes in, wins. He won. He won okay, you know. He he won pretty easily, but I didn't like. I didn't love his gallop out. So now he's going first time four hundred yards, and if you know, like all the other two million trials, I always try to get these horses that are coming in, you know, without running the trials before the Golden State, and then they would always lose to the ones that had that yeah. trial, that four hundred yard experience. So I'm I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna go against them because he hasn't ran the four hundred yards. And sometimes we get into our head like this, and I, I'm guilty of that too. Like sometimes, like you know, do I want to take the experience? Like I get into my head as well. We all do. We all do. And these, and you're right. These kind of nights could get frustrating if things don't work out on specific, you know, races, and then you start double thinking your uh, opinions later on to the night because they're so deep. There's so many races. So yeah, with uh, 14, yeah. there's gonna be times yeah. where you're like, okay, look at that angle is working, it's yeah. hitting, and then it's gonna burn you <laughs> later <laughs> yes. on. Or it burns you early, so then you get yes. away from it, and then it, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's it's totally true. All right, George Duarte, you're going in race number seven. You're going seven nine four with your top pick being HRH Royal Cartel. All right, a bonus pick. Any draw you want, any race you want, any pick you want. Where are we going? I'm going luck in number thirteen. Okay. This was actually the horse I've been looking forward to play the whole entire trials. 
as soon as this trial ran on the Golden State, I want I couldn't wait to bet them next time. Okay. Who is it? And that is a politically extolled V. I mean, if you look at the the Rudoso form, it was just terrible. Then yeah. he, he he had that workout on September 19th, and it looked like a, a whole different animal. And um last time he broke like a shot, he was right up there, and he just started getting I think maybe because he hasn't had a chance to really run. He, he got yeah. goofy, started weaving around. You know, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure he's adding the blinkers on him tonight, yep. that night. And uh, if he just breaks like he did, he's gonna be much more professional. You know, with that experience. And I and at five to one, I'll take him over somebody that you know the favorite. Walk it back. You know, hasn't ran uh, under the lights, and it's gonna be late. It's not gonna be an early. Trial yeah. is going to be the one of the last ones. So it's going to be, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, he's going to, it's just going to be something so new to him that I, you know, I'm taking my chances against the horse. I know it's going to be quick. I know it's going to be up there. And I hope Francisco can get him home. Yeah. And it's first time blinkers. You're right about Polico extolled. And um, he is a fool to a political pence, right? I believe. Yeah. I since it is. Yeah. Yeah, he's a full brother to a political pence that champion champions winner. So, all right, Polico XO with the blinkers on. Uh, and at this point, we're just hoping he, he keeps a straighter path, right, with the ditch and the blinkers. Yeah, I hope uh, his sister wins earlier, too. In, oh, uh, favorite yes. city. Yeah, favorite city. So hopefully, get Who both was, in the finals. It wasn't favorite city like 20 something and one in that. Yeah, in the first trial. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which it was a good start for me. And that's, I had her in those, and then it, it went, it all went crashing. I think in trial three, there was another big long shot. Yeah, that's yeah. when I kissed my wine lost. That was, no, it, it wasn't a long shot. It was the second choice, but kiss my wine was a favorite and lost. Yeah. Well, that yeah, early, that early before ended up paying like 20 G's or something like that. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. After there, was, that, there was a Magic Castle one, I think the second. Yeah. Had, had there, a, yeah there, there, like, that, that's when it went, cra everything went crashing for me. Uh, after that one. All right, George, to recap, race seven, you go seven, nine, four, and your bonus pick, race 13, the number two horse in that event. All right, so the viewers get a little bit of a glimpse of uh, what is that you do here for Equibase at Los Alamitos. Um, how's your process go as far as race by race? What are you doing uh, after each race? Well, after each race, I uh, was good about the shot. They shoot, they show the, the drone in the head on, so I get every view I can possibly imagine, and then I just... Uh, I, at the beginning, I'd go, okay, let me see who had all the trouble at the beginning, the bumping, the broke slow. Then I watch the head on for any weaving or, you know, not leveling out. Cause you see a lot of horses, they'll be like sideways. They'll be like, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. So then that's, that's something that you should pay attention to. See how long it takes them to level, yep. you know, cause there are a lot of times a bump can mean be meaningless or a bump can be mean yeah. a lot. Like you can see them, how those, their whole body weight switches. Yeah. And then they're just off and then they had to straighten out and then that's when they go. So then that's something you should look for. And, you know, with the bumps, because there's some bumps where it does nothing. No, they just run. Yeah, it looks like, like nothing even happened. Yeah. You know, I like to notate it just so you know, but when you watch the replays, you'll see how much did it matter or not. And that's what I do. I And then I do the margins, which is really easy to do. They're the best margins in court horse because yes. I have those views. It's not because I'm the greatest. It's because I have <laughs> all the views that I can get, you know? Like, yeah. Everybody else has to do it from the pan shot, and that's it's, hard. It's so tough, it's especially so tough. at 400 yards. You know, yeah, because when... they're so far away, and then yeah. the angle, yeah, it's just. So I'm lucky I have the drone, and I have my camera, so you know that the margins on there are right. Yep. All right, George. Uh, thank you for for all the work. Thank you for joining me. Uh, keep up the good work, and uh, I'll see you this weekend on the south. All right, I'm bringing pizza too. Yes, sounds good. I'll see you there. All right. All right. Welcome back. Uh, now joined by a rotating guest here. Professor G, welcome back to the program. I drew a number, Professor G, our, our Director of Marketing and Publicity here at Los Alminos, Orlando Gutierrez. You drew trial number eight, numero ocho. Talk to me about this uh, race number eight here on uh, Sunday night. Thanks, Jose. Yeah, when you told me that I was uh, in trial eight, I was just going through my picks, and I was going five deep in this race. <laughs> so I said, thanks a lot, Jose. You know, the <laughs> toughest trial, the one that I can't figure out, that's the one you're giving me. That's fine. We'll figure it out. <laughs> And uh, I ended up going with the outside horse number nine, Tabasco Jess Jose okay. for uh, owner and EG High Desert Farm, Enrique Gonzalez, trainer Jesus Nunez, and Irving Lara. This horse is coming off of a really nice victory in the trials of the Golden State Million Futurity in only his second out ever after a six-month layoff, Jose. And he comes back with a super nice performance. 
And uh, the way that this horse finished was very impressive. He didn't qualify to the final, but certainly looked like he was full of run, did it very comfortably. I think that horse can still improve. And everything kind of matches up with what he did in the trials of the Golden State Millions. Still draws the outside post, yeah. same rider. Uh, and the way that this horse broke, broke out quite a bit. You know, it's understandable. He had not raced in a long time, had never raced from uh, that outside post. In fact, his debut came from post number two. It gets the outside, the gate opens. He breaks fast, but way out. But uh, every mile did a nice job kind of leveling him out, got him under control, tapped him a few times. The horse responded really, really nicely and finished super. So I'm going to give him a shot here trying to beat the favorite, the number three horse, Trusty Jess from the barn of Chris Odell. And this horse, yeah. talk about a trouble trip. That was Trusty Jess, right, Jose? This horse uh, broke out, lost his path, got bumped around, ended up drifting in a couple of uh, paths to the inside, but always had some really strong run. So I wouldn't be surprised if this run, if this horse with a clean, clean trip puts on a show here on Sunday night. But still, I like the odds on the outside horse, the number nine, four to one. I'm going to get on Tabasco Jazz. I'm going to go with this horse. All right. So you're going to go nine, three, one, Connie's honesty on the rail. You think this one can, can sneak into the trifecta? It can. The horse has really good speed. Uh, we've seen this horse uh, win several races here on Los Alamitos this Philly. But most of from the inside post, I'm going to take the boys in this one. I head over. All right, Professor, you get a, a bonus pick. Any trial you want, any horse you want, where are we going? Well, I'm going to stick with kind of the same path pattern as Tabasco Jess. I'm going to go with Exculpatory. In race number seven, the number four horse, one last out uh, after a, a debut that uh, had been coming for a while ago, comes back in his first out here on Los Alamitos at 300 yards going against Maidens and does just a really professional, strong effort. Didn't have the super, super star, but a really good finish here for number four, Sculpatory in race seven. That's going to be my second selection here on the trials of the Los Alamitos 2 million. All right, Professor G, thank you for joining the program. You're down at Burgards. Let us know what's going down at Burgards. What, what kind of specials can we get for, for the horse players visiting Burgards? Well, you know you're going to get a fantastic room here, a great atmosphere. All the TVs here uh, at Burgards are here uh, focusing on horse racing or sports, over 60 HD TVs. we got uh, replay machines out here, live tellers. Uh, if you want to just make your bed with using your voucher, you can do that as well. And of course, a full bar. There is our uh, bartender right behind me. So, uh, you know, a perfect place to enjoy all the racing action here at Los Al is Burgards. All right. Thank you, Professor. Again, Orlando Gutierrez, our director of marketing and publicity. Race number eight. He's going 931. 931 with Tabasco Jess, the top pick on the outside. And the bonus pick being the four horse in race number seven. Professor, thank you for joining us. We're going to be plenty busy with the 14 trials on Sunday. Can't wait, and I'll see you there. Absolutely, Jose. See you then. And uh, now I'm joined by a very special guest, Rachel McLaughlin for Horseshoe in Annapolis. Rachel, uh, we go back to, what, what 10 decades? A decade ago. 10, <laughs> years, 10 or 11 We're years old. ago. We're old. Yes, we were young pups. We were young puppies way back then. No kids, no kids. No. And now look no. at us. Five, yes, five look of, at us. what? Five or six between us. You've got three, yes. and I've yep. and I've got two. So yeah, five kids between us. I can do math. <laughs> what's what's that, what's that meme that says? Look at us. Look at us. Right. That, look at um, us. Who'd have um, thought we? Who'd have thought? Not who'd me. <laughs> who'd have thought? Look at us. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. By the way, thank you for having me uh, as part of your broadcast team for a couple of. Uh, carts this upcoming season let's start there first let's talk about uh your track uh we're recording this on friday this is your closing day uh when can we expect horse in the to get back going next season yeah you know what i actually have a little countdown clock to the next year uh, 143 days one hour and 11 minutes there's a um this is kind of cool i'm glad you asked me this because we have a sol total solar eclipse that actually is happening right here in shelbyville is the location this year and so really? that's our opening day, Monday, April 8th next year. We're going to run on Monday, and then the next week we're going to continue our regular schedule. It's pretty similar to what it is this year. So I am definitely looking forward to um, some time off and to yeah. prepare for the opening of next year. 
All right, I'm gonna put you to work here for a few minutes. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we got two million trials on Sunday at Los Amigos. We got 14 of them. I got a special handicapper for each and every trial. You drew lucky number nine. So trial number nine, let's talk about this race here. Mention uh, who you think are your top contenders and who you eventually landed as your top pick. Yeah, these are such tough races. I looked at them last night as I was telling you, and it's just, it, these are these are amazing races and some of the horses that we run here i was looking at some of the purchases you know purchase price that are listed here and yeah. it's just insane to me here from indiana to los al and that that'll segue me segue me right into my top pick the four um asher who was a 350 dollar um yearling at rio Doso select so that's just so insane to me um i think that this one's talented obviously you know we know that the the start's really important the last couple even that yeah. second by a neck i think that's what impressed me the most when i was looking mm -hmm. at these that was 440 yards and maybe that that extra that extra a uh, little bit gave him a little bit of a you know to make up for that yeah. um or her to make up for that stumbled at the start and still got second by a neck the times are nice on this one um down to 400 which has won that win on july 1st in um the trial so just this one looks really good christian ramos i know that name i don't know yeah. a lot of these jockeys as well as as i do here obviously and then the damn um jesse james um estica by jesse james i highlighted all of the breeding that i know and and so that's i know that's a good um, sire and that dam's nice so i think i'm gonna go with asher here on top all right so i i got your notes here you went 495 so you do also give a look here to optical illusion on the outside and the outside yeah. post on los alamitos tends to play fairly well yeah you know what i'm glad i asked you that before we got started because here it's been the exact opposite um yeah. our outside it was uh you know kind of favoring before we we updated the surface a couple years ago and it has just settled so nicely over the course of the meet and the inside is just hot. So there's been a couple horses that I've given the nod to if I like the outside and the inside here. And you said the outside's hot and I kind of liked optical illusion. So I put that one in here. Um, this one, uh, what trouble? I mean, this is one of those horses that I just don't think that he can catch a break. This poor guy. I, I mean, yeah. he likes to get out. It looks like um, I didn't, I haven't watched it, but I've seen some of these comments I can tell that he kind of comes out sideways, it seems like yeah. in a lot of his races. So um, that's always, you know, a concern. You like the ones that pop out, get clear. And he's had some tough finishes too. So many seconds where I think he probably, if he could have gotten a straighter break would have been a lot um, better. So definitely being a bridesmaid and not the bride too much. But I like that 350 yard dash there on September 10th, looked really good winning. By almost a length and the second place finisher came back to win and that's the only line i don't have highlighted that yeah. didn't have trouble so let's see if we yeah. can't get since he's on the outside if he breaks clear i think he's gonna be tough and then i know this isn't a huge deal with quarter horse but i always note when a horse any horse quarter horse thoroughbred does something for the first time and you're adding 50 yards and going 400 for the first time so you gotta kind of keep that in mind too all right, uh, since you didn't have much, you know, it was a random draw who was going to get uh, the trial there. I also gave you a chance for a bonus pick. Any pick that you like in any yeah. other race, and you landed mm -hmm. in race number 11, right? Yeah, you know what? I really like race 11. Um, the three gets out really well. I think it's that uh, AJ Shining's race to lose, but I'm going to give you guys a long shot in this race. Okay. Maybe not to win, but something to mix up in exotics. I really like the two Teller Arizona MRL. Um, Teller Cartel and obviously the uh, dashing executive dam. I like the 400 yards last time. Um, you, if you cross that out, this horse really hasn't done anything wrong and has overcome a lot of trouble. This is another one where I have highlighted almost every race where this horse has had trouble, but still has a really good in the money um, finish record. So probably I wouldn't see this one going off at more like eight, eight or 10, maybe eight, 10 to one. Cause I feel like there's going to be a lot of money on the three and the four in this race, but I would mix that one in, in my exotics teller, I Arizona like MRL. You like it? I like that. I you're got the Los Tony's approval. Yes. yes. All right. So to recap, Rachel, you're going four, nine, five in race nine and your bonus pick will be the two horse at a price in race 11. Um, yep. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, no, it's thanks. always a thanks pleasure me. to catch up with you. Um, and it's always, uh, it's been fun being a, a little bit of a colleague with you on site over there. Uh, yeah, you did a great job thing. for us this, this year, Jose. Thank you so much. You always do such a great job. And look, bankroll manager already put up the tree. That's my look, girl right there. She, my she girl put Kat. up the tree already. 
uh, and uh, I feel like you're you're ready to put yours up too, right? I am. Up. Uh, yep. I'm take. I'm following. I'm following Mama's uh, lead. I'm gonna be going home after the re this uh, meet is over, and I'm putting my tree up ASAP. <laughs> By the way, I, you were you were the traveling lady. I saw you at Breeders Cup. You're here. You're there. You're everywhere. I mean, you know, I can't keep up with you. I know. I, I'm going to Vegas again this year too for NHC. Super excited about that. So yeah, I told I uh, got got Houston a little bit older, my son, and uh, I told Joe and Eric, I said, uh, put me in coach. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yes. here you go, grandma. Here you go, abuela. See you yes. later. <laughs> well, Rachel, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, have a good rest of your afternoon. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jose. I'll see you later. And we are back. We're up to trial number 10, race number 10 on the 14 race program here, joined by Christopher Wade, your Los Alamitos analyst here each every night from the paddock at Los Al. He also does his hits from Burgart. So you want to check out Burgart's. Uh, he'll hang out there during the races as well. Chris, welcome back to the program. Uh, how are you doing on this uh, Friday afternoon? Uh, it's, a, it's a great Friday afternoon. Rather, rather busy, but uh, yes. it's a good day. It is a good day. Anytime we can get these trials, these are the kind of nights we look forward to as handicappers and horse players. So we got 14 to, to dive in on Sunday night. All right. Drew a hat uh, out of a hat. Drew your name. Drew a number. You got trial number 10. Talk to me here about trial number 10, who you think are the main contenders, and eventually who is going to be the top pick. Well, a top pick is a good-looking, great uh, middle part of the track that A.B. Wow. This is a horse that uh, has improved each subsequent start, uh, crushed in the first time over low time in Oval and in qualifying – and uh, ran a very good race to be a yeah. very good uh, second or uh, third in the Golden State Futurity versus uh, Train Station V. is going to be a one to nine favorite a little bit later on, on uh, yes. early in the program, race eight, I think it is. But uh, this horse earned a pretty solid figure with everything factored in and uh, was very impressive in the trial and has uh, my top number by just a little bit. But I'm going to give him the slight edge there as the favorite there in 10th race. All right. Who's underneath? So you're going five what? What's the horse underneath made for exact dozen tries here? Well, the eight will be up in there. AG Top Secret, this horse uh, shipped in. was ran, ran very well to be a pretty good second there. Second time off the 135-day layoff will definitely improve for Heath Taylor, who's having a great season no matter the level of competition yeah. or track venue. So this horse uh, will definitely improve second time over the Oval. will be our second choice in uh, that 10th race. And then underneath, you're going to go 5-8-3-1, right? 3-1 and one, giving a look here for the Supers. Yeah, that three horse RS Shere Khan was a very, very impressive, a much, much better looked effort. He was a long shot W in that debut with some trouble along the way off a B and a B plus workout pattern for a, a Don Ferris. But the last effort was running fourth. He had a stack of trouble. He was locked and loaded yeah. behind with runners and he got up, finished very well and got out strong. So he's a stab at a big, big price to get a slice of the pie and on these exotics at the very least and uh, spice up those on these plays. And you can't forget about Jaime Gomez on a big victory trial ride, right? He's got the rail here with a political boogie J. Yeah, that horse uh, was impressive last time. Earned a pretty solid figure with everything factored in. He's going to be my fourth choice in that uh, tense affair. All right, so Chris is going uh, race 10, 5, 8, 3, 1. All right, Chris, you get one more pick. Any trial you want, any race you want, any horse you want, where are we going? We're going to race number 12. Um that, that, in, that, in that particular trial, five Spar Supremes are going to be your probable favorite. He won his last race from the rail there that particular evening. And uh, was very, very, very good to us that particular night. We were on TVG together. Our numbers were pretty solid that particular evening. We had seven top, what do you think it was? And we closed up the pick four with that horse. But kind of a stab horse to the outside, a big, long strider. That was uh, Michael Rona's our preview show selection the last time, 22 nights ago. And that's leastly tempted the outside. Yeah. This horse is steadily improving. Uh, we'll like that outside post much as he did last time. And uh, we'll like the yardage and get a perfect outside post and show that late run. And uh, a nice little price. We'll give him a look there as one of our selections in that uh, 12th affair. All right. To recap, Chris in race 10 going 5831. And his bonus pick will be in race number 12, the nine horse lead the lead tempted. Uh, yeah, plenty of work for us left here throughout the day. We're recording this on Friday. We still got to finish up all the comments for the nightlines, all the top selections, the consensus sheet with a lot of players enjoy uh, checking out the consensus sheet will be put together by Professor, Professor G and we'll share it there on the socials and also losamios.com. All right, Chris, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, let's get ready. Let's, uh, let's finish up the work. We got busy, busy night of trials on Sunday night. Yeah, it's going to be a busy, great night of racing. You got a lot of horses shipping in from all over the place. You got some horses that are steadily improving. It's going to be a great night of racing. And uh, don't save that twelve dollars on that pick four. No. You never, never know. I mean, I had one recently yes. that just cost me over a thousand dollars by saving twelve bucks. 
Yeah, but, don't do uh, that. Now, this is the night where you can uh, spend a little bit more uh, because the pool should be good and the payouts could be healthy. All right, Chris, have a good rest of your Friday. I'll see you this weekend. I'll see you this weekend. The Los Alamitos traditional pick six continues to rise. On July 2nd, a carryover of nearly $15,000 led to a total pool of over $150,000. On July 9th, a carryover of $15,000 led to a total pool of nearly $160,000. Plus, with no jackpot provisions, the Los Alamitos pick six can pay big time every time. And if we don't have a carryover going into Sunday night, we'll add 10 grand to the pool. That's right, the fast rising Los Alamitos pick six is one of the country's best. And uh, now joined by a colleague of mine, Caleb Keller. Good to see you, my friend. We'll be partnering up this weekend. We'll be talking about all 14 trials on the Death on FanDuel TV. Uh, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? Looking forward to it, my man. And uh, 14, I believe, is the most trials we've had uh, in recent memory. Maybe there was one time we fit them in. But uh, this is going to be tremendous. Even some races with nine horses in them. So it's going to be one of our uh, most fun nights of the year to handicap. For sure. We haven't, yeah, we haven't seen 14, I, I want to say, in at least a few years, right? I, I remember 12 or 13, thir 12 for sure. We might have had 13 for the Golden State Million a few, about a month and a half ago. But 14, to me, it's a little bit rare. We haven't seen it at least in a couple of seasons. All right. I drew names out of the hat with trial numbers. You got trial number 11. Uh, so talk to me be, uh, here about trial 11. Who do you like? Well, this is a race where I'm finding more weaknesses than strengths. Yeah, I think that each one of these contenders, you can wonder why would I be willing to wager on this horse? But that means that one or multiple of these horses are going to run through the weaknesses to get the win. And I'm going to focus in on the four here and talk about something. I feel okay. like to some degree, I'm a little worried that this horse has had too many races with seven so far. But this, the horse continues to get just a little bit better with each start. And I like how the horse broke there in the PCQHRA breeders maturity this horse has been second to political rivalry within length twice we know how good that horse is and i think yeah. the four can pop out of the gate i do think the three and four are going to try to match strides early my problem with the three being for heath taylor and rodrigo i don't know if the track's playing a little slower but these times i mean i, I just the, the three got a great trip and yeah. only went 20.34 like i got a tough time betting the three as what i feel like is going to be a favorite. And, and one angle that I have on this race is that I think there's going to be some bumping and colliding from the outside. The nine is a talented horse, but a horrible breaker. The nine swerves in. The seven likes to come outward. And when I look at the eight expensive, there's two things happening with the eight expensive since the horse won on debut by two lengths. Number one, the eight, the breaks are getting worse, but number yeah. two, the finishes are getting better. So the eight needs to get a clean dispatch, but if the nine comes in and the seven comes out, there's little room for error for the eight expensive. Now, expensive, he was a flashy debut winner, but his time didn't match the margin of victory. Remember that 1582? That just didn't match up. And he it's not like he's been all that uh troubled since then, but he's he I would expect that he would have moved a lot more forward. And maybe that latest win is an indication that he's getting better with that 1559. Yeah, the eight is not the biggest source, but he reaches out nicely with with strong strides. Uh, the nine, the nine's got some talent. I mean, the nine's kind of like a ball of clay that Eddie Willis is trying to form into uh, something nice. The nine was horrible first time at Los Al. They got the rail. The horses didn't do anything, but they did come forward nicely last time. First time the nine ever broke good enough, and they ran a nice second. So you know the nine is getting better. Uh, there was one price in the race, Jose, that you know. <laughs> I think my man Scotty has got him 1% on Equine Edge, which is not good. They got him as the worst pace, which is not good. But still, the five first and fun has some talent to work with. I think this is going to be a nice racehorse in years to come because the five had two horrible beginnings on the first two maidens and still, you know, was trying pretty hard. And then I thought it ran a much more complete race in the Futurity trial. Still wasn't a fast time, but the five was only, you know, one length off of the three's time. And the three might be the favorite in the race. So the five first and fun, I'm going to probably include this one on my ticket. And I think the five uh, is a horse that's going to move forward uh, in races to come. All right. So I got you down as four, three, eight, five with the five being the interesting long shot there in the vertical exotics. All right. Uh, since you had a random trial, you didn't have a choice. You got 11. I'm going to be, I'm giving you an option. I'll give you a bonus pick, bonus pick and whatever the trial you want, whatever horse you want, who is it? Let's go to race one on Sunday night, and I'm looking at the nine, ABC Corazones. This horse has okay. so much talent. 
that he showed on two occasions out of four races. Now, this horse has gotten jammed up at the start a couple times, but if you look at the second start for the nine in race one, absolutely pulverized that group when they got a good break and then came back and run much faster in the Heritage Place Futurity, finishing mm-hmm. fourth in there. The last race was only a put over. The allowance didn't mean much. The distance was too short. It was off a layoff and the nine got hampered at the gate. So I did not see this as a strong trial. I see the nine as having a clear path on the outside for top connections easily, I think, having the most talent in the race. And I'm looking for the nine to sail in race one. ABC Corazon is, it looks like, to me, also a very, very tough horse to beat in the first trial. And, Kayla, when we work these trial nights, we've seen where the first trial of the night tends to hold up fairly well throughout the evening. So being right in the first trial could be beneficial for a lot of these runners, specifically ABC Corazones. And some about the first trial with like an outside post and a slight yeah. tailwind. There's, there's, somehow there's always a live contender in the first three races. We'll, we might have a little sunlight at, at tip off here yeah. by Pacific, but I wouldn't re- necessarily count on it. But some about like the outside post, early trial. And, um, you know, the, the quality of the trials is really, really strong. I mean, obviously yeah. you got the big tiger uh, later on is going to be one of the absolute uh, heaviest favorites, which – train station v you know with that record is really going to be fun but this is gonna be a great night jose and uh, i'm glad you put this all together to a meeting of the minds for the trials it's cool I, i've got a special guest handicapper for each and every trial so we'll move around the show i've got some some friend uh some friendly faces some uh some friends from far uh in between that are joining me it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun show thank you for joining me taking a few minutes out of your time uh i've got a cowboy hat for you waiting for you Right. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see if it can fit on Sunday. We'll see if it can fit. <laughs> All right. So uh, I remember my new errors needed a little extra room. So hopefully yeah. you got a, a little space in there. But that'd be my first time, and I'm ready to rock it with you. All right. All right, Caleb. Uh, thank you for joining my friend. I'll talk to you, and I'll work with you this weekend. Yes, we'll see you then. And uh, welcome back here uh, as we move along here to trying to cover all these 14 trials with a special guest handicapper each and every trial. A familiar face on the program, the voice of Los Amigos, Michael Rona. Michael, how are you doing on this Friday afternoon? Fabulous. How are you, Jose? You, uh, you've you taken on quite the task. I applaud you. I love the concept and uh, congratulations on the idea. And I know it's an extra lot of work for you, but uh, I'm, sh- I'm sure it'll be worth it. Once, Once my mind got to figuring things out and trying to work it out. I'll say, you know what? I got to go through it. No matter how the logistics and all that, I got to go through it. So it might be one and done, Michael, but let's see how, <laughs> we, let's see how we get it going here. I drew names out of a hat with numbers. You do, yep. you drew lucky number 12, trial number 12. Uh, so let's talk about this race here. Who do you think are the main contenders and eventually who you landed as your top pick? Plays uh, that make a lot of sense, beginning with number one, Hot Prodigy, who won his trial to the Golden State Million Futurity from the rail. Uh, he is a very good horse on his day. He qualified to both the Ed Burke Million and the Golden State Million Futurities. Wild West Futurity winner, Five Bar Supreme number four, is racing in terrific form. You'd have to give him a look. Racy Sweet Corona number eight's a very consistent, classy horse who had gate eight of nine when beaten ahead in the Kindergarten Futurity and was a certainty beaten last time out in an allowance at odds on. Anybody who wants to make a case for any of those, you won't get an argument from me. But you know me, Jose, I do yes. like to go value hunting and mm-hmm. think outside the box. So for the purposes of this preview show uh, segment, I'm going to hit on a wild long shot, number five, SC Time to Run, who okay. will be any old odds. This horse cost $335,000 as a yearling. It must have been a painful decision for the connections to finally make the recent decision to geld him. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if it might bring about some admittedly needed improvement. The horse has been a disappointment so far. But Jose, I took a look back at his gate work uh, since the gelding. And he was pretty good round the turn in particular. He clocked 12.3. Uh, But what I really liked about that gate work video was how much he was fighting the rider all the way around the turn. He was pulling. He wanted to do more. And so I've just got it into my head that maybe as a first time gelding, we could see a stark improvement. He does need to lift, but he's got the Dunn Ranch, Monte Arosa connections. And you don't often get 15, 20 to one about those connections. First time gelding. I'm willing to give him a shot at the odds. And obviously you got the pedigree. 
a political jets out of spit curl diva they paid three hundred thirty-five thousand. the pedigree's there if he's gonna improve i think this could be the time as a first time gilding so i like that you're taking a flyer a long shot look here with the five sc time to run as your top pick in that trial number 12. all right you didn't have a choice of what trial you got random draw but i'll give you a bonus pick any trial you want any pick you want where are we going we're going to a horse that made a big impression on me back at the start of the season. Kiss My Wine, who's engaged in race number nine. He was on debut when second in a trial to the Kindergarten Futurity. Okay. And uh, I, I really liked what he did in that race after early trouble. He hit the line really strongly. And I've been waiting for him to come back to Los Alamitos ever since. Uh, in the meantime, he's been to Rio Doso, where he impressively won a trial to the Rio Doso Futurity, finished midfield in that million dollar final. So, OK, he comes back to Los Al. He was favourite in a trial to the Golden State Million Futurity, but he was eliminated. He just ran out of room. Nothing went right. He got pinched back and finished last. So I'm looking for a big improvement with an even fair trip for a horse that I think can be a late blooming two year old. He's owned by Bobby Cox. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if there might be a little bit of Jericho about this horse, Kiss mm -hmm. My Wine. I think he can make a late season impact. And I look forward to him in three-year-old races and beyond, because I think he's going to furnish into a very, very good horse. He cost 180000 as a yearling. We haven't seen close to the best of him yet. I When I went through the card, I, I searched and I was like, this looks like a Michael Rona pick. Why? <laughs> because I remember he impressed you on debut. Yes. And, and I sent you a text when he was entered in that win at, at Ridoso, May 26. I text you. I remember that. Yes, I you gave me that you. heads up. You, yeah, I, text, I appreciate it. I, I, text, uh, I text the group chat and I said, hey, Chris my wine, who such and such was very impressive in the runner-up effort, is up at Ridoso. And he looked impressive clocking there. Uh, by a two length. So kiss my wine, your three to one choice as your bonus pick in race number nine, race number nine, kiss my wine. And uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. I, I, I think this is a, there's plenty of options to go. When, when the entries came out, Michael, uh, I, I thought we might get 13. When we got 14, I was like, well, that's even more, that's even great. More betting options. But I feel like the quality of these trials has really, really elevated uh, from, from the last few futurities, I feel like there's a ways to go. A lot of good talent, uh, each and every one of these trials. Yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it. I'll have plenty of herbal tea and lozenges on hand to get me through the 14 trials. And I can't wait. It's, it's going to be a crackerjack night of racing. It should be. All right, Michael, thank you for joining me. Uh, have a good rest of your Friday afternoon. I'll see you this week in Alasal. Good on you, mate. Hooroo. We are back and uh, now joined by a colleague of mine who, George Ortuzar, we've worked together on the quarters plenty of times here at Los Alamitos. So I said, you know what, George, you're in the mix. You're going to get a trial. It's going to be <laughs> random. Join me at this time. And here you are. Welcome to the program. It is great to be with you once again. Always a pleasure to work with you and Los Al. You know, hey, like they say, your best day of racing could be at night. And I think that this specific night is going to be a stellar night. This this look has so much quality. Wow. This this field, this this 14 trials, every trial outside of Train Station V, who is the impressive going to say future, he'll be in gate uh, in trial number six. Outside of that, every other trial, you you couldn't get creative and get involved. Don't forget about the verticals on these kind of nights, the trifectas, the superfectas, those kind of bets could get very, very attractive, George. Yeah, yeah. Find a couple of long shots along the way. Use them up and down uh, because if you're right, you're going to get paid, especially like you said, the verticals. But you know me, you and me and you, I, I love the pick fours. So, I mean, mm -hmm. pick fours are, are still my mainstay at Los Al. I'll be playing the verticals, but the, I love the pick fours. All right. I pull a number and a name out of the hat. You got trial number 13. Tell me about trial 13, who your top picks are in that race. All right, uh, lucky 13, the penultimate race of the night, and uh, a highly competitive race. I mean, really competitive race. You can make a case for five or six of these, and no problem at all. Any of them could win. Uh, you know, Joe Lee is getting better, obviously. Uh, you know, uh, better uh, Butter Holmes and Garden yeah. look great winning two in a row. But uh, I'm going to concentrate on three horses. The two, politically extol V, the uh, five, walk it back. And the eight, give heed. So those are going to be the three that I'm going to be concentrating on. And uh, let's start with the uh, with the uh, 
two since it's you know the first one up politically yeah. extol v who's actually my top pick in the race and this one's last race i mean you look at the uh the pps on this one a real dose of the first two starts really broke horribly terrible yeah. starts really hasn't gotten his head into the game then finally got it together broke smartly and ran pretty darn good in the last race at rio doso and the first race here you can't really tell on the pan shot but i saw the head on and this one although broke good which is good it's a good sign yeah was kind of like a minimal shift to the left a minimal shift to the right back to the left back yeah. to the right so if this one gets his head in the game and runs straight I think he's got huge potential. And I don't think the inside runner uh, breaks too well. Number one, Scorcher. So I think that's going to help politically extolled. If he keeps a straight line, he's the one to beat. A couple of bullets coming into this uh, in workouts. So that one certainly uh, is going to be my top pick. And this guy, Heath Taylor, uh, Rachel McLaughlin told me he's a pretty good trainer, right? Yeah, he can yeah, win he's everything. Pretty he's pretty good. <laughs> It's not bad. <laughs> and uh, to add a note to your selection, and you 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 great a great video observation of the two. They're adding the blinkers on on the two, George. So oh, you, that's wow. You know, that's you, that's you gotta, gotta like help. that. You gotta like that. You gotta like that. Yeah, that was uh, that was certainly this one's got loads of talent. You could tell, and I think uh, he puts it all together. He Taylor always shows up on these uh, trial nights, and he's gonna be big. All right, tell me about the other two. You went two eight five here. Yeah, so the eight give heed is my kind of like you know I, I I've always liked give give heed when uh, give heed won and was claimed by Sergio Morfin. Uh, I was all over that uh, horse that day. It was a nice nice win. I think this one's got talent. Uh, kind of like uh, last time out was in the outside spot in post position eight and broke outwardly, and that might have cost him maybe second place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was it was a, a slight. So I like the fact that BF He's Outrageous is out there in the nine, kind of keep him from going out. I think that's going to help give heed. And I think give heed is a long shot with uh, with with talent. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, he's going to be one of those long shots for the verticals that I'm going to be using, but certainly going to be using him in the pick fours. And the five walking back coming in for Redoso, you got to like well, that form, right? Got to love that form. He's getting better and better every time. Comes in here, worked a bullet on October 23rd and 12.2. Another stellar trainer, Eddie Willis. When yep. he comes here, he comes here. He's not here to play games. He's Business. here to win. Business, and, yeah. and so you got some sharp, sharp trainers. Montiel Rose is in this race. I mean, this is a, a a really, really, this is one of the more difficult races. I would advise you to spread as much as you can. But my top pick is going to be the Heath Taylor uh, beast with the blinkers on, politically extol V. All right. So you're going to go 285 in race number 13. All right. You get a pick. Bonus pick. Any other trial you want, any pick you want, give me a bonus pick. Where where am I going? My bonus pick is going to be my key for the entire night. I'm going to single in race number 12. We're going to go to race number 12, and I'm singling this one everywhere. Pick threes, pick fours, single on top and, and everything. Just love this two-year-old, and the uh, horse's name is Racy Sweet Corona. Look at the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the connections are first rate Dutch yeah. masters, Jaime Gomez, Peinado is aboard, who's been aboard every time. And this one, man, if you look at that last race, it was so impressive. I was so impressed. Look at that rerun. The, the, uh, the guy before it, the, bro, the, the assistant starter was in there messing with him. Then he, he jumps up in the air. He loses like four lengths. I, I don't know. He almost won the race. Yeah. Came back and still almost. What a stellar performance. And this one just breaks. It just breaks half decent. He's going to crush my single of the night, my best bet of the night. My whole night revolves around racy sweet Corona. Oh, you sold me. You sold me because I like that horse as well. Uh, so we're going to be very well backed on racy sweet Corona. And you're right. That horse had no business being that close after that. No. That was our last time out. Yep. Yeah, it was a great performance. And there's going to be some great performances throughout the night. 14 spectacular races. And uh, you got some spectacular handicappers here on the show. Uh, I, I, so this is going to be a really good night. Well, George, thank you for joining me. I know you'll be watching. We'll be uh, broadcasting the races live on FanDuel TV. On the, I'll be on the desk alongside Caleb Keller for all 14 of those trials. Thank you for joining me. Always fun to catch up with you. And uh, thank you for the selections. All right. Have a great night.
All right, George, talk to you later. And uh, we are back, and I brought back a Quarters original back on the <laughs> TVG days. We're taking it all the way back. Tatra, my friend, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time to join me here on Los Lomios to Mini Futurity Trials Night, 14 of them, uh, and you drew lucky number 14. Yeah, it's it's the trial that nobody will advance out of, right? I mean, <laughs> you get you get to the 14th and final, you get the marine layer coming in, the track gets heavy. I mean, you've got to be really good if you're going to qualify this late in the night. Do you agree with that? Yes, and it has happened before, and we've seen it night after night, Todd, where if you're drawn in the early part of the card, maybe not this time of year because it should be dark by the time we begin all 14 trials, but if you get a little bit of daylight, it could help immensely on how well you're going to run and how good of a time you're going to put up. So yes, uh, the farther, the deeper you go into the night, it could get tougher to put up some, some of those qualifying times. But on the flip side, if you do put up a good time in the final race, you got to upgrade that horse immensely uh, yes. going into a final. Yeah. It, you know, aside from the, the fact that, look, I mean, we're trying to see who's going to be the top 10 fastest qualifiers. These are just great betting races, yes. race to race. Mm -hmm. I think especially this year, looking at this two-year-old crop, I think you're going to get... I think you're going to get like half the qualifiers are going to be some big surprises on the night. And the 14th and final to me is just a great betting race straight up. You know, Sonny Corona's the nine to five morning line favorite. He came from the mountain last time out. I'll, I'll give him credit. I mean, he obviously, you know, we talk about going to the mountain and the difficulty of handling the elevation. Well, I think there's something about coming back from the mountain too. And so last time out, he came back from uh, Ruidoso. He had a good second, but he's always been a horse that you don't know how he's going to break. He's broken pretty well previously, but he races with a flipping halter. And that's kind of my theme to this race. I think there's a horse in here who's ultra talented that if he can overcome the disaster that help it, happened last time out, he's the horse to beat. And that's the four Mr. Cartel Jess. He had no chance in the break last time out. He's going to be first time flipping halter tonight. Mm -hmm. The 1550 that he ran uh, in his allowance win back in August is the type of horse that he really is. As far as handling the distance, it's not going to be a problem going the 400 yards. He just needs to get out of the gate. And I think he's absolutely faster than Sonny Corona. Uh, Mr. Cartel Jess is absolutely the horse I'm focusing in on here with a nod to the nine to five morning line favorite. And then maybe a little bit of nod a little bit further to the outside with uh, moon in the blues. But uh, I'm really excited that I got the 14th and final because I like the four Mr. Cartel Jess quite a bit. Well, not, you know, being the 14th trial, it's, they host a lot of drama. It is a close out leg of the late pick four. You know, everybody's chasing the late pick four. It's the close out leg of the two hour pick six. And also it holds a lot of drama because by that point, we know what the bubble time is. Every connection says, we hope we go faster than them. Everybody that's in the current top 10 says, we hope they we hope they go very slow. So this race holds a lot of drama heading into, into the final race of the night. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be watching from beginning to end. And then uh, I, I'm going to be there till the end anyway, especially with the pick six. I think there could be a real healthy payoff. And there's going to be obviously be a huge pool as well. Yeah. All right. So recap race 14. Todd goes four, seven, nine with a big nod to Mr. Cartel Jess. All right. This was a random, do random draw of trials. You didn't get a choice which one you got. You got trial number 14. Now I'll give you a choice. Any trial you want, any horse you want, any horse you want, give me a pick anywhere else on the card. Well, look, I love the late pick four. That's a, a play that I'm always diving into. So why don't we go bookends on this race number 10, the eight right. AJ top secret. He's another one that I think is going to be helped out. Um, with the draw that he has and another one that, you know, if you look at his last race coming back from Ruidoso, uh, that was a huge effort to go 400 yards in 2014 off that time away, been off from May to October. He's uh, got the flipping halter again this time around and uh, AJ top secret, I think is overlaid at seven to two in the morning line. He's going to move forward off that. So while we were looking against the horse, Second time back from the mountain. I mm -hmm. like AJ Top Secret second time back from Ruidoso. I like that. That's your bonus pick in race number 10. You're going with the eight AJ Top Secret. Uh, all right, Todd, thank you for joining me. Thank you for uh, taking a few minutes out of your day. How, how was Del Mar today? How, how did you go uh, out? Del Mar is always great. I mean, it's a different vibe when you're down here, and you've been down here summer. Yeah. A lot of people haven't been down here during the fall. I love think, fall. Think of it as Del Mar light. Hey, all the restaurants are open. Yes. You've got plenty of room at the track. It's a great vibe. The ocean is still the ocean. It's great. Uh -huh. So um, I love Del Mar any time of year. Sign me up. But uh, Los Alamitos has always been 
very close to my heart. The other night, it, it, it's so interesting that about the time that you called about to do these trials, and I, I was excited to have someone ask me my opinion for something I'm going to follow very closely. But I was in a restaurant near my house, and I was wearing some TVG gear. Mm -hmm. And so the waitress said, you work for TVG? I said, yeah. She goes, my uncle used to work for TVG. I said, who's that? She goes, my uncle's Les Onaka. And uh, it was his Aww. niece, Tara. And so we started talking about it. And I, I said, you know what? He's the best I've ever seen yep. of any breed. And this was a night that, that he loves mm -hmm. because, he, you know, you talked about it. You're so smart because you talked about if a horse does qualify late in the night, you've got to move them up. And that's yes. what I loved about his handicapping. He would actually translate bad trips and then what it cost them time-wise. He'd look at the track variant. Um, you are in that mold of, of Les Onaka, who's one of the best I've seen. So, yeah, it's nice to, to be part of the original quarters, but the uh, quarters is currently in great hands with you at the helm, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, always fun catching up with you. Uh, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time, and uh, we'll see if we can catch some winners. Trials night. I know you're going to be watching every single trial. Yeah, I'm going to be playing. All right, uh, thank you. Have a good night. I'll talk to you later. The Los Alamitos traditional pick six continues to rise. On July 2nd, a carryover of nearly $15,000 led to a total pool of over $150,000. On July 9th, a carryover of $15,000 led to a total pool of nearly $160,000. Plus, with no jackpot provisions, the Los Alamitos pick six can pay big time every time. And if we don't have a carryover going into Sunday night, we'll add 10 grand to the pool. That's right, the fast-rising Los Alamitos pick six is one of the country's best.